Hello everybody, my name is Bob, and this is a KSP Quickie with Bob. Uh, I'm going to do probably, a, probably going to split it into a couple of videos. Um, so probably two videos uh, on uh, sort of alternative or avant-garde propulsion systems. Uh, and both of them will have something to do with nuclear energy. Um, now, um, back in the 60s, uh, 50, I think 50 and 60s, 50, 50s and 60s as well, um, uh, they uh, tested... Um, uh, a nuclear thermal rocket engine uh, in association with the Project Rover, which was to, to build a nuclear thermal rocket engine. Uh, they tested it on the ground. It worked perfectly fine. It would work great in space. Uh, and it would have twice the uh, efficiency, the fuel efficiency of uh, conventional rockets. However, uh, twice the efficiency isn't always quite enough. Um, you know, a, a mission to Mars, let's say, um, using... Uh, uh, nuclear um, thermal rocket engines uh, would still take about three years. If you want to cut that down dramatically, you're going to have to have something new and better. New and better. Uh, so, uh, the main problem, if you could call it that, of uh, nuclear thermal rocket engines is uh, in order to get even more efficiency out of them, you have to heat the engine up to a temperature at which it would melt. Uh, particularly the fuel elements within it. They, they are, they, there's no physical way to make fuel el elements that would uh, withstand the heat required to significantly increase the efficiency. Um, so um, what you want to do is get, get, get the engine hotter, uh, but as you get, get it hotter, of course, you reach the point where the fuel elements inside the engine would actually melt. Um, so one approach to that uh, problem is let it melt. Um, so someone uh, thought about the idea of the uh, gas core uh, nuclear rocket engine. The uh, problem is that uh, regular uh, basic open source or open cycle uh, gas core nuclear rocket engine uh, spits out nuclear material out the back end, and there's no way to keep that from happening, really. Um, so uh, you have a couple problems from that. One is you have an engine that spits out nuclear material. <laughs> never, never a good thing. And you don't want to bring a, a engine that, that spits out nuclear material to uh, to a tea party or you know to planet Earth for that matter. Uh, so that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two is, <coughs> you mean, uh, that of course, as you're spitting out that nuclear material out the back, uh, you're also losing m nuclear material from inside of the um, engine. So you would have to have some way of replenishing the um, uh, nuclear material in addition to you know, running the fuel through it, of course. Uh, so that's the uh, open cycle gas core nuclear thermal rocket, rocket engine. Um, uh, I thought a, a something that was planned to be possible to, um, to increase dramatically the um, efficiency of nuclear thermal rockets, but with some drawbacks. So, uh, some very bright man, uh, and I don't know what his name is, uh, thought up uh, this idea, which is, uh, so you have the the um, high temperature uh, uh, core, which is made of is made of uranium hexafluoride gas, uh, uh, fissioning at a temperature which would you know normally melt a nuclear core material. But instead of just letting that stuff spew out the back, um, you contain it within a cooled quartz wall, uh, uh, and um, uh, and it is not actually contact with the nuclear material that, that heats the reaction mass, the, the hydrogen typically is the fluid used, but actually the radiation from that um, fissioning mass would pass through these cooled quartz uh, glass, cooled, cooled quartz walls, uh, and then uh, react with uh, tungsten particles inside the actual fuel, the reaction mass uh, of the uh, rocket, and heat that up intensely and shoot it out the, the back. So you wouldn't actually lose any nuclear material uh, as you ran the, the engine. Um, and what I would like to say about that is that yes, uh, such an engine would uh, allow uh, immense in increases in theory uh, over regular nuclear thermal rockets, but with the, pri co the price tag of being a, a dazzling, bedeviling level of technological complexity required to make it. Uh, so there, there is not y as of yet ever been a a nuclear uh, that's called a nuclear light bulb engine um, made, um, uh, but it, it might work in theory. 
So I have a mod engine. I don't know who the mod author is. I actually got the engine a while back. And I'm going to see what I can do with it in terms of uh, actually getting it to do useful work. And so we'll find out. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to use, test uh, the um, uh, gas core nuclear light bulb engine um, by using it to help me get a um, little space station into space. Uh, so space station is everything from here to here. And then rest is the fuel and, and the um, the uh, nuclear light bulb engine itself. Uh, and people uh, who propose the nuclear light, light bulb do say that it could be used uh, for a ground launch. Uh, your mileage may vary, uh, but um, so um, throttle up, SAS on, and I'm using uh, solid rockets to help get it to a point where where it's high enough in the atmosphere to uh, really. You know, do some good here. Um, three, two, one, and go. A little shaky, A little wobbly. I have been having some bugs with the KSP, so God only knows what will happen. Our gravity turn was a little bit delayed because um, I was on the solid rockets. It's kind of hard to turn when you're on the solid rockets. So, uh, come on, stay put. Got a great gimbal range on that. All right, let me see what we're, where we're getting here. A long ways to go, and our speed is decelerating. Let's go and throttle up. We're still ascending, though. Is that uh, this space station is actually a little bit heavier than it, than it looks? I got a marred part on here that's fairly, uh, fairly heavy here. All right, what have we got? Uh, we're still ascending, but we're still a whole lot of. Uh, 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 But we're not going that fast, put it that way. But this thing is so fuel efficient that that might work for us. Just kind of slowly, slowly climbing up to... Oh, no. No, I am descending. That, that's not good. This just doesn't put, doesn't seem to have the power, really, to uh, uh, to get a, a big heavy load up. All right. Well, if this is this is failing. Okay. I think this nuclear using this nuclear light bulb to actually get things to space, despite some things that I've I've heard. For, you know, for this this mod part anyway, it, it just doesn't make sense because this this engine weighs 20 tons. That's a heavy engine, and I mean maybe it's possible to get stuff with space with it, but you know it, it would be very difficult, I would think. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it um, uh, at least most of the way into orbit, and then use that to to finish it up, or 
you know, maybe test it while it's actually on in orbit. So, in any case, uh, let's go. Uh, in three, two, one, and go. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. Alright, we'll go ahead and uh, throttle up. Standing by for a solid booster separation. Solid booster separation. And gravity turn. Boom! <laughs> I was afraid of that. A little bit top heavy. Tight, we're go. We're gonna go ahead and activate the nuclear engines now. Give us a little kick, getting us going to space while we still have the um, strap ons going. Tilt it all the way over. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Come on, get back here. Yeah, it's pretty unwieldy right now. Go ahead and get a minute amount of thrust going so that I can uh, maintain control over my heading here. Make sure I saw some fuel in the boosters. Yeah, but not much. Let's go and throttle up. Almost gone. All right, let's hope that we can uh, get to orbit on just the uh, nukes. That's a handsome looking vehicle.
it's fairly safe to say we'll probably make orbit. It's a little bit wobbly, hard to keep on hitting. Yeah, a bit wobbly. Doesn't like to stay put. And it's starting to overheat a little bit. Apparently it's not happy with real long duration uh, uh, burns. Oh. oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, it's all good. Come on, cool down. Okay, well, very interesting. Uh, as you can see, I mean, we started um, uh, these engines well into the, uh, you know, kind of, we had probably, what, 15,000 meters uh, when we started these engines? Uh, and then we burn burning all the way up to here, and um, there's still quite a significant amount of the fuel fuel left. So, um, yeah, I think probably they are, are as efficient as advertised. Uh, do you seem to have a bit of an overheating problem? I don't know whether I need to move these radiators over here or just have more more of them, uh, or or what exactly. Uh, but in any case, this definitely seems to be a useful uh, tool in the uh, old arsenal. Uh, if I can one, one how figure out how to reject the heat properly on it. Um, but yeah, uh, we got, we got our little space station, uh, up, and, uh, so it's ready to refuel whoever comes by, uh, and, uh, that's all for right now, and until next time, hasta la vista, adios!